<laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to In My Mug episode 211 on Monday the 3rd of December 2012. I am your host Stephen Layton and today we're getting Christmassy. I know it's a little early but I have held off for as long as I can. It's now the 1st of December has gone and I can now unleash it and give the Christmas spirit to the world. So if you go to the website go have a look at our Christmas decorations that are up. Um, we have lots of gifts ideas and stuff like that. But while I talk about gift ideas, we should do the news. So, classes. No, not glasses, classes. We have home espresso class, we have home brewed coffee class, and we have introduction to cupping class. Uh, all aimed at the home user who wants to learn a little bit more, wants to get a little bit more involved, uh, maybe a little bit more polished in their way that they make espresso or brewed coffee and they are incredibly reasonably priced uh, this is 30 pound for like three four hours of, of our time with a group of other home roasters where we'll come together at has been towers and give you a little bit of a tour around get you to try some coffees go away with some new skills um, i think that is the perfect christmas present for the coffee geek but that's just perfect present number one <laughs> Perfect Christmas present number two, gift vouchers. Uh, not digital vouchers like on the old site, but this time real life card and writing and paper gift vouchers that we can send to people. You can also gift an In My Mug subscription to somebody, which I think is very cool. So you can send them and they can activate it whenever they're ready to start it off. And they can also do the same with the 12 month orders. It is the perfect gift, perfect gift number two. But, Perfect gift number three. How about the Christmas and espresso and filter blends at the back? The annual event that has gotten out of control. Um, gotten out of control because I got emails about this back in August asking when they would be back. Um, it's the eighth year of doing these uh, espre Christmas espresso and Christmas filter packs. And every year they seems to get more and more demand for it. People get more and more excited. Um, now, if you're an In My Mug subscriber, I am warning you that they will be in your In My Mug later on in the month. So, unless you are desperate for them or can't wait, or for whatever reason you must have them, then just hang on. Uh, don't get buying them. Uh, they will be the Christmas and New Year ones. So, probably ruined it there, but hey. And anyway, that was the news! And now it's time for 20 seconds on, and this week it's going to be on Brazil. And coffee production in Brazil is responsible for about a third of all the coffee made, making Brazil by far the world's biggest producer, uh, which is has held for 150 years. In 2007, 2.249 metric tonnes were produced, 80% of it Arabica. Uh, coffee plantations cover about 27,000 kilo uh, square kilometres. 20 seconds on. And I wanted to tell you about the 3.5 million people who are directly employed through coffee uh, and uh, 7 million indirect in Brazil. This is a huge thing in Brazil. Like coffee is massive still. Um, lots of it goes to generic kind of nasty coffees, if you like, but they still produce some amazing stuff. Um, but I didn't get time to tell you any of that. So let's dive into this week's coffee, which is one of my all time favorite delicious lovely coffees it's called brazil fazenda cachoeira it's a yellow bourbon from the minas Gerais area well kind of minas Gerais. um it actually comes into sao paulo state because it's right on the border but it's very near the nearest town is pocos de caldos which is uh, minas so it's as good as minas and this coffee for me was my epiphany moment it was the moment where i suddenly went wow i get this um and Gabrielle, who owns the farm, was the first coffee producer I got to meet properly. Uh, like somebody who I bought coffee off. Um, I think the rest restraining order still out on me against him because I just like love this guy and I love his coffee. It is just absolutely stunning. 
the relationship we have on this one is that we because uh, we know Gabrielle and just to keep me from away from him um, we managed to secure some of the best lots from this huge farm um, and we've also actually agreed in the long term to have a, a guaranteed price on this coffee and a guaranteed buying of this coffee providing quality remains which is the first time we've ever been able to do that and that's just because of the trust between uh, I, the trust I have in Gabrielle and his coffee but also the trustee has in us to do good things with it um, it's a UK exclusive I'm fairly confident it's a European exclusive too um, but uh, that matters not it just matters that this is a Brazil Brazilian that is a great example of quality coffee the farm's been in the family since 1890 um, and this is the 107th crop proper crop to come through um, as I said it is located in Sao Paulo state but it's three miles from the Minas Gerais state border and it is as good as a Minas Gerais coffee and it has all of the properties and the kind of taste profiles I would expect much more from Minas the altitude is fairly low it's 1100 to 1250 meters um, that really doesn't matter but it is that's Brazil Brazil tends to have these much lower uh, lower altitudes compared to other places the farm is 417 hectares, which is huge! Um, 106, only 165 hectares of them are coffee. Only. Like, it's crazy. Um, it's absolutely humongous place. Um, and and I, when I went to visit, I was just completely blown away with the size and how well it is kept. It is a picture book of a coffee farm. Like, it's almost like Disneyland. Of coffee it's mental like there's little places to have your photo taken with signs and stuff like that really cool um, it's a Bourbon varietal uh, the majority of the coffee on uh, Cachoeira is Bourbon although they do have some Canario and Topaz and other really weird and unusual varietals but they're very small um, it's a pulp natural which means that the cherries taken away and the seeds left to dry um, and uh, it for me what you measure pulp naturals against it really is that actually to be fair it's not a great coffee but for me it is no it is a great coffee but there are better but this is the most consistently good always good never let you down solid coffee so let's look at the numbers the farm is called Vicente Cachoeira de Grama uh, Cachoeira meaning waterfall in Portuguese uh, and it has a beautiful waterfall on the farm the altitude is 1100 to 1250 meters owned by Gabriel Carvalho Diaz and his family. Um, nearest town is Pocos de Caldos. Um, it is in São Paulo, but as good as Minas Gerais. Um, it's a Bourbon varietal. That's it. So I guess we should go and do the map bit. It's the map bit. No expense spent. It's the map bit. So here we are, we're going to go up in the air, come on, up, up, twisty round then and go up in the air, sorry it's on a go slow today, oh, then, then we speed up, and there we have a beautiful view of the UK, and we're going to go on our familiar route to the left, and I know I'm saying familiar route too often, to the huge, huge country called Brazil, it is massive, look at it, it's massive, but the bit we're interested in is down here. So we're going to zoom down here and just to show you how close it is to Minas Gerais and Sao Paulo, you can see it is smack on the border. And if we go down a little bit more, you can see it's even closer. Like Pocas de Caldas is the closest town which is there. That's that conurbation. Um, one of the things about Pocas de Caldas I love, they have a monorail and the monorail doesn't work. It's awesome. Uh, that, that little interesting tidbit but we're going to go down onto the farm because this is the most famous thing in my mind it has there we have the drying patios um but one of got see that there that's the waterfall that's what it's named after i've paddled in that pool and to tell, talk to you about manicured grounds look at that it's beautiful um it is an absolutely beautiful farm it is so well laid out um, you can see that all those houses are the houses of the workers who uh, live full time on the farm as well. Um, it's like little Cachoeira village. Um, yeah, that was the map bit. Hope you enjoyed the map bit. 
Now it's time for Roland's cleverness. We shouldn't call it Roland's daft fact, really. We should call it Roland's clever fact. Roland's daft fact of the week. According to the ICO, which is the International Coffee Organization, Arabica production has risen by 10% in the last seven years, but Robusta has increased by 25%. This is in line with what's happening in general. Arabica growing is always on the rise, but Robusta seems to be doubling it every time, with 60% of the coffee now Arabica and 40% of the coffee grown in the world Robusta. Very interesting, isn't it? Roland's Daft Fact of the Week Is it? You know, where come Roland knows everything? I wonder if he knows the meaning of life. 42, yeah. Okay, so last week we had espresso and I've got to tell you I was so grateful for it being espresso, being in Hungary. It made my life a lot, lot better. As I said to you last week, we're going to be going back to some of the ones we've been through before. So Kalita Wade comes on, but hopefully that will uh, that will not come up for a while. And we've still got lots on there we haven't done. So let's spin it round where it goes. Nobody knows, nor cares. And this week it is Eva Solo. Okay, Eva Solo's good. I like Eva Solos. It's actually very good timing too. Wheel of Death's really good. It's like this is like we fix it, but we've had a whole new stock of Eva Solos on the site now, so ready for Christmas again. The perfect, beautiful gift. We also have the brew guide, which is very, very cool for the Eva Solo. I'm very pleased with our Eva Solo guide. Um, yeah, it gets a lot of views. They all get a lot of views, but Eva Solo one is good. Um, so I'm going to whack you on pause. I shall be back with you in just a Christmassy tick. And we're back in the room. So we shall start with the espresso. Look at this beautifully presented. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Roland, for making my drinks for me. I even have people to make drinks for me now. That's yeah, that's how I roll. I love this coffee as espresso. It is sweet, it is chocolate, it is toffee. It is caramel, it's comforting, it's all the things I love in an espresso. I, I, I seriously, I, I love this coffee. It is just phenomenal, it really is. Um, we should dive into the milk now. Oh, good milk, much better than I can do. That sweet milk chocolate with the sweet milk comes together. The coffee is powerful enough to come through. That is amazing. Like, espresso, amazing. That is amazing. I, I, I love this coffee. While we're waiting for that to finish off, I'm just going to show you, if you're only my mug subscriber, you may have seen a new bag. And I know some of you are going to be very happy with this bag because it's nice, it's you know, but some of you are going to say, does it stand up, Steve? Let me just pour this through. There we go. Sorry, I don't multitask well. I'm just going to pour it out. So, thank you, Wheel of Death, for giving me Eva Solo. I'm actually really pleased with that. So it doesn't stand up, Steve, and it doesn't. And there's a purpose that the bottom is much thinner. So Royal Mail changed the way that they post stuff recently and the bags that we had, the red bags, are one part of the solution. This is the other part. It makes them thinner. It makes them into a large letter, which means that we can carry on doing in my mug without charging you an extra, I think it worked out about an extra 15, no, 18 pound a month, uh, a, a, a three monthly subscription extra. This makes it about the same price as we used to send it. The other beauty uh, is as well that it fits through a letterbox much easier. These will fit through a letterbox, so the postman won't be taking it back to the sorting office. So, although it doesn't stand up, there are lots of people who will be very happy that it does all the other things, and I hope you are too. Like, I think it's, it's a better thing that it fits through the letterbox and you actually get it. Let me know how you get on with them. But please don't hate me. We have to change them. So, um, I have a new mug. How cool is this? Thank you, Roland. This is from Roland's Daft Fact Fame. Roland bought me it for Christmas and couldn't be bothered to wait until Christmas, so gave it me early. And it's a Facebook-like mug, and I think it's very cool, and thank you. And yes, I, I'm, I'm very touched. It's a triple. What? The 
espresso is delicious. The milk, as much as I've gone off milk, I'm not a massive cappuccino fan at the moment. I seem to be not even, it's really struggling with them. Is delicious. That is phenomenal. Like it is beautiful. That's sweetness. It's just like it's all sweetness. Super clean, well processed, well picked, good varietal, working with the land. Like yeah, that's what coffee should be for me. Um, I would love to hear your descriptors on this one because I feel like I know this coffee inside out. I was roasting earlier, and Roland asked me, "Hey, is it is it roasting like uh, it has in previous years?" And it was like it's like painting by numbers it's so easy the coffee almost tells me what to do and yeah it, it, I, I worry that I'm a bit kind of like I know what this coffee is I know what it does so please your descriptors for descriptor scale would be good and while we talk about descriptor scale we should do descriptor scale descriptor scale so this week do you hate me or something? There's only two people could be bothered to do descriptor scales. Two people. You both can have badges if you drop me an email in. And it's Colin Morgan and Seth Taylors. Um, I particularly like Seth who said, New Zealand hungry, Michelin star restaurants, oh, the life of a specialty roaster. Oh, trust me, there's an awful lot of other stuff that isn't quite that. But his descriptors were big, juicy, balanced, clean, sweet, chocolate, nice, mellow acidity. And... Uh, Colin put a cup of smoothness coupled with wonderful mouthfeel in espresso. Not normally a style I look, but the coffee does more than enough to remain interesting. Thank you guys. Both of you, pop me an email. You can have, both have badges. But I insist that you all do Descriptor Scale this week with this coffee. But I'm going to take another swig off. So we should do Pinboard of Doom. And today's Pinboard um, is by Woodpunks, who is on Twitter and posted this picture up. And I loved it. I thought it was really, really cool. This is all of these bags that he's had over the last few months. Um, that's dedication. Like I, I, I owe you more than a a, a pin board of a pin badge thing. Yeah, like yeah. I thank you so so much. This amazes me how much people kind of support what we do. And hopefully you'll have any my mug bag to start mixing in there as well now. So uh, thank you very much to Woodpunks. Um, and that was the pin board of doom. So. Up for air. Um, so what we have now is time for the staff clip. So the staff clip today is another one of our part-time members of staff. Uh, full-time dedication, but part-time attendance. Um, Emma's been with us for ages now. Guys, it's like three years or so. Um, and Emma comes in and helps us uh, on the packing side again because dispatch is such a big job. Dispatch team are ace and they, they, they really do earn their corn. But uh, MZ comes in and always smiling, always happy. And she, the reason she's part-time is that she also does hairdressing. So it's time for Emma's hair care tips. Thank you, Emma. Don't know what a blue ring is. That was the staff clip. And um, that is all of the staff done. You have met the entire has been team. As wide and as broad as it is, you have met us all. Apart from my, I actually have one of those cut eighty heads too. I'm not quite sure why. But you have met everybody here at has been over the past few weeks. Um, our team is special. They're amazing. I, I am very, very lucky. A company is only as good as the people who work in it, and we have the best. So we're very, very lucky. Okay, we are done. We are wrapped up. It's time to go. Brazil for Zenicashware is phenomenal. If you are not a subscriber, you must buy some and drink it. It is amazing. I, I am, yeah, I'm so happy to see it back. Um, it's a coffee that I never, ever get bored of. Wrapping up. Do remember, life is too short for bad coffee. Why did I sing that?